the NIF one issue. And I know that this has been something that many, many investors have been very much interested in. And there have been a lot of questions coming to us at board as to whether this is a good investment, uh, what are the risks, what are the issues, and a number of questions which we have tackled as frequently asked questions that we sought to address under various categories, which we will get to in a moment. Let me just say in commencing this webinar that you can send all your questions during the webinar, and we will seek to answer that at the end of my presentation, which is estimated to be a half hour or so, and then we'll allow questions for another 15 or 20 minutes. Let's get going on the NIF. Well, this has been many of the issues relating to NIF has been discussed um, over time. And so we want to focus on particular areas of concern by investors. Let me say as well that the, this broadcast is for a very wide spectrum of investors, not only individuals, but also corporate, as well as institutions, insurance, pension funds, and so on. So we are seeking to pitch our, our presentation in a manner that will reach all from the highly sophisticated to those that are not necessarily as sophisticated in their evaluation of the NIS bond. I start now with my first um, my first slide. So let's see where we get to from here. Um, investing in the bond, but of course, the most important thing that we are going to cover are the areas of concern. And this on your screen would be the areas of concern which have come up. The details of the offer are more or less a hiking factor. Investor concerns, we have broken those investor concerns into what we call the four C's capacity, the return, the quality of the collateral, the character of the issuer, character and quote in code, um, the covenants that support the issue of the bond. For us, there were other considerations, the default risk, the interest rate or market risk, uh, the liquidity risk, and of course, credit will come into it. Thereafter, we are going to speak to the question of our view, the board view, and then we'll go on to question. So let's see what, what's next in terms of our presentation. The details of the offer, and we go next to the next slide, which speaks to the specifics of the, of the NIF. And the specifics uh, really address what is this bond about? This bond is in two series. The first we call series A, which is a 4.5% coupon bond maturing in five years' time. Uh, what we call Series B, or a 12-year bond uh, um, of 5.7%. And then the third in the series is a 6.6% bond uh, maturing in 20 years' time, all of this being tax-exempt, the income that is in the hands of a corporation, or an individual. Our next slide is really set to speak to the matter of the range of acceptances for the bond. The total bond issue, if fully subscribed, will be $4 billion. And in the Series A or five year maturity, the range of, shall we say, acceptance is a minimum of $800 million up to $1.2 billion. The range of acceptance in the 12-year series B is $800 million up to $2 billion. The range of acceptance in series 3 or the 20-year bond, $800 million up to $2 billion, and when aggregated, will not exceed $4 billion. So our 
next slide now. What I want to point out is that the, the yield on government paper now is um, at the five year marker, 3.5% or thereabouts. At the 12 year marker, 4.7% or thereabouts. At the 20 year marker, 5.6% or thereabouts. And so that what you would see is this, this bond from the NIF is uh, approximately 1% above the government yield in all cases. So you would see 4.5% for the five year, 5.7% for the 12 year, and 6.6% for the 20 year. Now, when you translate that into a, when you translate, let's say, a tax exempt bond into the taxable equivalent, what you would see on your screen is that for those investors that have a, are in a tax bracket of 30%, the equivalent yield is 6.4%, certainly much higher than 3% of a taxable bond in, uh, in terms of government paper. And for those institutions that are subject to a 35% tax level, such as the banks, this would translate into 6.9% tax taxable equivalent and so we can go on along to the 5.7 percent translates to 8.1 and 8.8 percent effectively for the um, for the taxable equivalent bond and in the 20 year the 5.6 percent or, or sorry 6.6 percent of the nif translates into 9.4 percent or 10.2 percent tax so these, the, these uh, numbers suggest that there is a level of attractiveness to the bond based simply on the coupon and the taxable equivalent as we go to our next graph. So some of the key aspects of the bond is the commencement of the offer. It has already commenced 12th of July. The final date for lodging of application for the bond is the 9th of August. Um, the no expected notification of allotment, that is how much you will get dependent on what you apply for and what is applied to you is at this point in time, 30th of August. Um, refunds, if there is an oversubscription, will come to you by way of electronic transfer um, this is based on the bank account that you would have provided. And this will happen uh, on the 3rd of September. The bonds will then be listed on the Trinidad and Tobago Stock Exchange, at which point in time you can trade your bond. That is the 4th of September. Let's go on and address now investor concerns. And we have categorized some of these concerns we have been able to, to put them together under four areas, capacity, collateral, character, quote unquote character, and covenants. So we'll, we'll speak to the, to the matter of capacity, which is the ability of the NIF to make its coupon or interest payments as well as its principal payments. Of course, we'll have to do some uh, put in place some assumptions in order to address the multiplicity of issues and combinations that can come in terms of the, the, the bonds that are issued in each of the seeds. So let's let's go on and look at the assumption and the scenario. What we have done is we've looked at three scenarios. Uh, in seeking to address the NIF capacity to meet its bond obligation. Scenario one really addresses uh, a situation where all of the longest term bonds, that is the 20 year bond, uh, would be taken to the maximum. And 
the sum of the series B will be taking up $1.2 billion and the series A $800 million. And the second scenario looks at where the um, middle series is fully taking up that's the 12 year and the earlier to mature series, at least the mature, which is the five year is taking up and the residual is taking up out in the 20 year space. And then the scenario three is what we call our most likely scenario of what will happen. It will be something of a barbell, meaning that the earlier series will, take, will be taken up to the fullest extent of possible allocation. And the uh, 20th series, the latest the mature uh, series, will be taken up to the fullest and the residual comes in the middle, that's the 12 year one, which we consider to be the most likely scenario, and we will speak to that as we go along. On now to our next graph and we speak to the assumption that we have utilized to test matters such as capacity and collateral and so on. First of all, that the bond is fully subscribed. We need to do this in order to do the evaluations and calculations that are necessary. Secondly, that the dividends that, are, that were obtained from the pool of assets in 2017, there will be no growth. Now, of course, if it actually actuality dividends are higher, what it means is that the risk is reduced because the sinking fund, those the funds that go into that, um, will be higher. And of course, if the dividends received are lower, then what will happen? What goes into the sinking fund will be lower. Let me just stop a bit to speak to um, what is um, what is the sinking fund for some of our investors. All the dividends and all the income flows from uh, the pool of assets that have been acquired by the NIF would go into a fund which is essentially ring fenced and held by the trustee to make payments of interest or principal for the bond as they mature. The trustee, of course, is FTB Trust Services Limited. So we have to make a, in order to calculate what the sinking fund might be, most what is required in terms of the agreement that is the trust agreement between the NIF and the trustee FTB um, Trust Services we have assumed a rate of return on the investment, that is all the income, the income on the income, if you want to call it that, of 1.5%, equivalent to 91 years present. Now, of course, that could be a bit higher or it could be a bit lower, um, but it, the, the investments that are allowable are essentially short-term investments. Now that NIF will repay the bonds at the five year, 12 year, and 20 year mark, either by drawing first fully upon the sinking fund, and if, if there is any uh, residue that still needs to be paid, either by refinancing or some other arrangement with the trustee, which could be liquidation of the portfolio or selling off some of the portfolio um, of the NIF. So now let us be clear, um, and this will address some of the later questions. First of all, there is a charge on the sinking fund, meaning that these funds are assigned and retained for payment of interest as well as principal of the bond. And secondly, um, that in the event of a shortfall, that the the assets can be refinanced or to the issue of additional bonds or um, in, by agreement with the trustee, some liquidation of the assets that are held. The assets are held, of course, are uh, a number of shares which we will come to in a short while. And that the refinancing will be done, the additional bonds that can be issued only for the purpose of paying off um, the debt. 
and we have made some simplifying assumptions which really uh, seek to address when those funds, when those additional bonds could be issued and for how long. They are in simplifying assumptions and we'll go past that for the time being. Now, let's look now at the three scenarios that we have developed to address the question of uh, capacity and then we'll turn to the question of collateral. Capacity, the ability of the issue of the bond to meet repayment. When you look at the first scenario, the first scenario uh, um, I should reiterate uh, suggests one that the Series A bonds will be taken up to the tune to the minimum amount of eight hundred million dollars. Um, series B because they're bonds taken up to one point two billion dollars, and Series C two billion dollars. And what this shows you is that. Um, the sinking fund, based on the assumptions that we have made, um, uh, after the payment of interest, will have uh, a balance in the fund of about $660 million. What this means is that, that the, if you look at it here, in the context of what is due, at the end of five years, that is the repayment of the, of the bond, the principal on the bond. If this were to be the case, then there would be a shortfall um, in the sinking fund of about $140 million. And this can be addressed to the issue of additional bonds for the purpose of refinancing to repay this earlier bond. And then what happens as we go along, as we go Cross here, what you would see at the 12 year bond in that the refinancing or the maturity of the additional amount, I don't want to get too complicated, um, is the, the 1.2 billion that is owed at the 12 year point plus the 140 million that comes across for payment into this area. And so we can go on, and then you will see that there will be a shortfall at the second time with regard to what's happening here. There will be a shortfall of $200 million, um, and that again will have to be addressed by refinancing or liquidation of assets. And then at the 20 year point, the, if you top up the $2 billion, which is this here, the CEC, um, you will have about $2.2 billion to repay. There will be a shortfall, and it is likely that that will have to be, in this scenario, it will have to be repaid by way of some sort of distribution of part of the portfolio. Let's turn to our next scenario. And that scenario points to essentially a situation where investors take up the full, um, the, the full allocation of, ma of the maximum of $1.2 billion and take up the middle series of, of 12 year of $2 billion and the residual goes to the back end. That is, that the first two series are taken up up to the max and then the remaining balance goes out to the 20 year figure. We'll jump here now and go to the third. Um, scenario, which we consider to be, be our most likely scenario. And this is the scenario in which investors go for series A, the shorter maturity five year, and go and other investors go for the longest maturity 20 year, and the residual is actually taken up in the middle 12 year series. In those conditions, what you can see is that in each case, of, that there will be some outstanding balance after drawdown of the sinking fund um, that will have to be refinanced. In this case, $510 million. And as it is carried forward and the sinking fund generates some income as well as pays out into the income, you will see that there will be a shortfall at the end of $310 million. So 
having painted those scenarios to you and having pointed out that our view is scenario three, where our read is that investors will pick up the short end and, they will, and certain investors will pick up the long end. Let's see what are the implications. As we said, there might be that, that there would be a shortfall of $510 million in at the end of the five-year maturity and uh, $160 million at the 12-year maturity and about $310 million at the 20-year maturity. Now, this represents a very small proportion of the pool of assets that is now owned by the NIF that is pledged or uh, that is that stores the bond and therefore the risk in terms of the capacity to pay by the NIF is actually small as you would see 6.5 percent 2.1 percent 3.9 percent of the overall portfolio based of course on the assumption that we have made and I think that the assumptions are fairly realistic assumptions. So coming now to this, this question, does the NIF have the capacity to make repayment? Um, we would say that, that it does and the, uh, the probability of any shortfall is exceptionally low. Um, the probability of any default is low. The probability of refinancing or asset sales, as we have shown in all scenarios, would be reasonably high. But there is more than sufficient coverage to support any of these shortfalls by means of the collateral. So we do not view capacity as the, an issue of significant risk. Let us turn now to the collateral. And when you look at the collateral, what is there? What does NIF now own uh, in order to meet any shortfall uh, and, and generate income by way of dividend and other income flows to pay interest as well as to pay principal and interest? First, at the top of the list, of course, you have Republic Financial Holdings Limited which constitutes, as you will see, 35% of the entire holdings of NIF at this point in time. What's happening is that the government has transferred the assets to the NIF. The NIF has to pay back, has to make payment for these assets transferred. The NIF is raising a bond issue of $4 billion in order to make partial payment for these assets valued at about $7.9 billion. The remaining amount, that is the difference between the $7.9 billion and the $4 billion in bonds will be issued as equity to um, the government, a corporation. So that is, um, and this representation by the corporation soul means that the corporation soul owns 100% of the NIF. So let's be clear. For some of our investors, this bond is a bond issued by a, uh, a corporation. This corporation is owned by the government 100%. And the, the, on the balance sheet of this corporation are all of these various assets that you have on your screen that have been uh, transferred here. So what is the quality of the collateral? Well, when we look back at the quality of the collateral, I want to look at some of my notes. Well, what you see when you look at the quality of the collateral, going back to that last um, exhibit, is taken from the bottom, OCM. Two years ago, OCM was $20.94. $20 it is now $12. So valuations have been adjusted substantially over the past two years. OCM however, only constitute 2% of the portfolio. So even if there were some deterioration further of OCM, then uh, it does not impact the overall value of the 
portfolio significantly. Um, if it goes up, same happens. It does not impact the overall value uh, significantly. WCO, WITCO, 5% um, of the total assets of the NIF. And that has come down quite considerably over the past two years from about $126 per share down to about $87, $88 per share. Again, um, our position on both these shares now are neutral in that we don't see, shall we say, we, we don't call it a sell stock, which means that it has a reasonably value for accumulation. Um, the Angostura, of course, Angostura, two years ago was about $13.50. It's now, it's now $15.75. Um, so really remaining now is TGU. All of these shares have been placed, has, have value based on the spot market, the market price as they are listed on the exchange. Now we don't know what is the what is the basis of the valuation for TGU? And that is a matter that the trustee will have to clarify um, to be able to say that this valuation has been done by party A, B, and C, so that we can then make a determination whether this is a uh, reasonable valuation or that we have the confidence in the valuation. So that's one area in terms of collateral that we have to look at. But that apart, all the others are pretty straightforward. Let's go to our next one. And again, in terms of collateral, the asset to loan value, that is the asset value now at $7.9 billion over the value of the, uh, over the issue of the bond of $4 billion, there is substantial coverage of 1.98 times if you take a snapshot at this point in time. Substitution of collateral, people have been asking about that. Um, that will require um, the consent of the trustee, which will probably require that the trustee for a matter such as this go back to the bond hold. And I've already spoken to the question of the evaluation. Jump forward to our next graph. And what you see, the question always about loans and lending and so on, the question always comes up as the character and pedigree. Of course, the NIS is a new company. So it has no track record. However, the NIF is 100% owned by the, ultimately by the government of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago Corporation. So our view is, is that on the basis that it is owned 100% by the government of Trinidad and Tobago, in case of need, we are of the view that the NIF will be supported although there is very little likelihood based on the assumptions we put forward to you, and although it is not legally required. Remember that one of the caveats of this is that the government must retain control of this company, so that in the event that there is a change of control, a default is triggered, and the trustee will buy, in, in, in most circumstances, will simply have to sell the assets to repay the bondholders at that point in time. There has been no history of default by, by the government, either for TC dollars or US dollars. One factor investor, investors may want to look at, all the directors of ENIF are employees of the Ministry of Finance, whether that is a trust or an entity, is for investors to determine. Let's move on now to covenants. According to the prospectors, NIF cannot pay dividends to shareholders. It means that all of the earnings, the income by the dividends or otherwise goes into the sinking fund or the pot that is being used to make payment of interest on the bond and as required a uh, principal on the bond. There can be no issue of new debt without the permission of the trustee. And again, that will come back down to the bondholders in case there is need for addressing the bondholders, that will have to be done by special majority. Two thirds of the um, of the shareholders or the value of bonds will have to vote in a certain way by special majority or by simple majority, fifty percent. Um, additional bonds only for the repayment of the original bond. So you can't borrow more, except 
for the purpose of um, retain the borrowing. If an other borrowing is to be had, other collateral will have to be put up. So, no use of assets for other than without the, other than the, with the content of the trust. Let's move along very quickly. Other considerations: credit risk. Well, the issue has been rated by the regional credit agency, CARICRIS, as CARI double which is well above investment grade. Um, the increase in the credit rating impact usually is that if the credit quality of an issuer goes up, you would find that bond prices will normally go up. If the credit quality of the issuer goes down, you will find that the price of the bond will go down. So upon between maturity, you could find bond prices because of credit either going up or down. The likelihood of support from God is high and is needed and is also God rating S and P, this is an international rating, not a regional rating, um, is uh triple B trust. Let's push ahead now. Default risk for some of the questions. Um Will the NIF be able to repay principal proceeds from the sinking fund? We have shown that the sinking fund will cover under the assumptions that we have made much of the requirement for payment and whether the, when there is a shortfall, there is sufficient collateral or, um, in terms of the assets held by NIF to make payment. So let's push ahead. Um, interest rate risk or market risk. Well, of course, if interest rates go up, bond prices will normally go down. And if interest rates go down, bond prices could go up or on its own. Uh, what we have seen in terms of interest rates, the central bank has signaled um, its intention to increase rates um, to maintain the differential between PP and US rates. Only recently in June, for the first time in almost two years, or over two years, the rate the, the policy rate has gone up to 5%. This is a factor we at BOSS feel that that interest rate differential will only make a difference if FX rates, um, the official rate and the unofficial rate are very close for market payment. That is not the case, and we don't see that this interest rate differential will have much of an impact. But of course, if the if the interest rate run right across the board, what you can expect with rising interest rates in bond price will fall. Let's go on now. I think I will run out of my time, so I'll spend just one more minute. Liquidity. Will I be able to quickly sell my NF and NIF bond? Remember that these bonds are going to be traded on the Trinidad and Tobago Stock Exchange where there would be buyers and sellers. It would be dependent upon the demand and supply dynamics on the market at that point in time. And sales would be executed at the prevailing price of the exchange. This may be higher or lower than the issue price based on interest rate movements and based on credit, among other things, including the dynamics of demand and supply on the market. Our view, the boss view. Well, there are a number of categories of investors. And if you look at the top line, what we are, we are looking at the various um, series, the five year, 12 year, and 20 year. And our view is that individuals will be more um, inclined to buy into the five year tranche or even the 12 year tranche, but it's questionable whether they might go out as far as 20 years. So we see a leaner of the individuals to the first year. Commercial banks, that that um, have the 55 percent um, tax rate, the commercial banks, um, they are more likely to go into the short end to be to get the tax rate. Are they likely to go into the 12 and 20 year tranches? Mutual funds will go into the next two tranches. This is our, only our view and our read of the market. General insurance companies more on the five year tranche and less so at the 20 year. Other companies for the corporate treasuries would look more um, would may look more at the um, I would say the twelve year um why I would actually say the five year track, which seems to be a little bit strange, but the other companies for treasury would go into the five year. NIB would be going out uh, I would think on the longer end 
consistent with insurance company out into 12 and 20 year pension fund, life insurance fund will go into the 12 and 20 year time. Let us move on to some conclusion. The likelihood of default, as we have said, is low. The probability of refinancing is high. There is sufficient coverage to support any shortfall. Um, we do not see that there is any capacity issue. The likelihood of bond support is high if needed. Of course, government will suffer a loss of tax revenue by the tax exemptions that have been made possible. Um, and let's go to our next graph. And finally, or near finally, we view the NIF bonds as having good value. And investors should consider carefully their own particular circumstances. That is the investment objective, income generation, versus um, preservation of capital, the risk tolerance, the time horizon, which is five years, 12 years, 20 years, and how the bonds can be sold or bought um, within those intervening periods um, in case of need. Liquidity, will you able to, will you need your funds that matured before maturity? then you need to have a market liquidity, and these are your considerations. Our position on the bond is we hold a buy recommendation on the NIF and IPO bond based on your specific circumstances and based on the various assumptions that we have provided. This concludes my presentation. I will now leave it open for questions and answers um, to the extent that you have those answers. And if we do, we will get back to you uh, on our website. So let's go to the first question. My answer is, so for the person who has basic information on investing, is this a good investment? This is the first question. Um, and my answer is, based on what we have shown you, we believe that this bond has good value and we are in a position to recommend the bond. Second question, are there currently any comparable investment opportunities in TNT? Well, as we have shown, this bond has a, a yield pickup on government bonds, even though government is the ultimate owner of the company. So we feel that this particular bond, in addition to the fact that it is tax exempt, is a reasonably good investment. Next question. If there is a change of government at the next election, is it possible that the details of the bond can be changed by a new administration? I would think not, because there is a legal and binding agreement between the investor and the issuer, which is in fact the NIF owned by 100% by the government. So I would think not. Are the bonds being sold at par at this point in time? Um, it is our understanding that the bond will be issued at par. What coupon rate will the NIF refine? Nans at in year five. I think that what has been made clear on the 3.3 of the trust deed is that in the in case of the need to refinance, additional bonds may be issued in identical terms. So this, my understanding of this is that the that the coupon rate will be the same. Next question. Is the interest guaranteed over the specific time frame? Well, I think the, the question of guaranteed has come up on previous occasions. Now, this, this bond is not guaranteed by the government of Trinidad and Tobago, which I suspect is where the question is going. But the bond is, is collateralized and secured by a sinking fund of the company, which we have shown uh, is able to make a significant part of the fund. And it is also guaranteed by a charge on 
all of the securities and shares that we have shown you that would be owned by the NIF. That is Republic Financial Holdings, RITCO, um, all that we have shown you, PGU, um, OCM, and Angostura. Next question. What if dividends came in from the asset drop? Very good question. It is always possible that dividends can go up or down. Uh, what we have shown or what we thought to in terms of analyzing the risk is that there is sufficient cover for the um, for payment both of interest and principal by dint of the assets that are held um, or owned by the NIF. As we showed, you know, the in, that the the payments or the shortfall in the order of 12% of the assets held, even if it goes up or even if the value of the um, assets fall, there is, in our respective view, sufficient cover to make the payment. Another question, based on the shortfall, would there be delays expected in the payout on maturity or should these be anticipated and the refinancing options taken so payout can be made to holders on time? This is a matter that the trustee acting on behalf of the bondholders will assess and address from time to time. Have you, next question, and they are coming um, fast and furious. Have you assessed the likelihood of default based on a decrease in the share prices of the underlying companies? Yes, underlying companies would have to fall by about some 87% based on the assumptions that we have, we have given before there's nothing in the kit. Um, so that's a significant adjustment. And I would say that it is reasonable to, to believe that there is sufficient capacity to make payment. Next question. With the expectation of a devaluation of the PC currency against the US, what effect may such an occurrence have on the value and the risk of owning these bonds? Well, this is really a compound question because at the end of the day, the issuer has the capacity to make payment in our respectful view of the bond because the liability of the issuer is $50 and the assets that the issuer, that is the NIF owns, are in $50. So in terms of that direct relationship, there is sufficient capacity. As the devaluation, uh, this I think this is a, a question which really speaks to um, the credit quality. Um, but it does not speak to, to the match of the assets and the liabilities all in fifty dollars. I don't think that at this point in time that matter will have a significant bearing on the bond. You as an investor, the value of your assets um, as uh, as matched against US dollars will fall, but this will be the case of anybody holding fifty dollars. Are the bonds transferable? Yes, they are transferable and marketable over the Trinidad and Tobago Stock Exchange. Next question. What is meant by issue additional bonds only for repayment of original bonds? I have, we have raised this question to the trustee, and it is simply that if there is a shortfall payment, there, there can be the issue of additional bonds to meet that a shortfall in order to address um, payment. Next question, which in your opinion will be more liquid down the line? The NIF five year or the R or the Republic Financial Holding Share? These are two different categories of assets. One is a bond and the other will be shared. The investor has to take careful consideration. Remember that the your bond will hold value held to maturity. So that if you bought it at 100 
on autonomy issue on maturity it is a hundred and you have a, 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 a fixed and known set of coupons or interest rates different from shares where republic um, financial holding shares could go up or down as for the question of liquidity the bonds are not yet an issue and we will have to see that as we go along next question in terms of default risk we are we considered preferential shareholders because wouldn't we only be paid after these individual company shareholders are paid to um you are being paid out of the dividends owned by nif so that you you there is no there is no competition with other shareholders the only thing is that the nif receives dividends for its holding in those uh, um, shares next question will the bonds be able to be held as security by financial institutions yes next question is this a government issued bond or a company issued bond this is a company issued bond as we have explained so all the presentation next question how does the performance of each company impact the investor in the bond who bears the risk or profit of these companies with the government gain the profit and loss the nif which is the company is generating the income by dint of its shareholding in these various companies you do not bear the risk you are the beneficiary of the coupon which is fixed and known the risk that you may bear is the risk of that we have we have spoken to before Certain credit risk, certain interest rate risk with regard to the bond, and we have addressed those already. Can the remaining shares be kept solely for the funding of the bond, or can the government sell it if they want? The agreement that is in place that the, is, that the, the shares are held purposes to secure the, uh, the bond holders, and I've said. There is a legal charge on the sinking fund, that is the income, income, and there is a legal charge on the shares and securities held by the NIF. If a future government diddles, I like the word diddles, diddles, with this newly created or pieced together company, can the security of the bonds be affected? As I just said, there is a legal and binding charge, and therefore the security of the bonds cannot be affected unless there is a consent from the trustee, and that consent cannot or should not be given unless there is um, some agreement from the bondholders for major for significant items. Next question, would we get more value from the bond or direct investment in the company? I think the answer to that is, what are your objectives? Do you want to get a steady and clear stream of income? Or are you prepared to take uh, a different type of volatility in earning from shares? One does not have a crystal ball to speak to essentially what the future will be from shares um, as opposed to the bond. But what I can say is you need to establish what your particular circumstances are, and you might need to go to a broker such as ourselves to get that kind of advice so that you can understand what your investment outlook and needs are. I think that we uh, more or less we have one more minute, or oh, I'm being told that we can extend for a couple of minutes just to answer a few more questions. So, is it fair to say that the rate of return is not a guarantee? It is fair to say that the rate of return is not a guarantee. 
What is fair to say is that the bonds are very well secured to you. The income from the, from the holdings of the NIF are, 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 are essentially uh, pledged to the bondholders. The value of all shares held in the event that there is need is to the bondholder. So I think we can we can see that there is sufficient cover to you as an investor, as we have spoken to in this particular instance. Next question: With our is the FHL, this is Republic Financial Holding, at fifty-five percent. What is the what if there is a significant change in ownership in that company? What is the impact on the value of NIF and the bond issuer? I don't think that there is too much in the change in ownership, but if there is a change in the value of the shares, then that will have some impact on the NIF value. And but having said that, we've spoken before that based on the assumptions that we have given, that the yes. The, the value of the share of this will have to fall by more than 80%. All other things being equal will really affect you uh, as, as an investor in the bonds. Next question If the bond is devalued on the PPSE, how does that impact an individual bondholder? Holding to maturity. Okay, I suppose the question is not about the value, but if the if the value of the bond falls. Well, if the value of the bond falls and you hold the bond to maturity, you will get what you you will get back your one hundred dollars. So if you bought at at issue at par. On maturity, you will get back your hundred dollars for the one hundred dollars that you put out. In the interim, as we have said, bond prices could go up or down. Next question: To purchase this bond, do I have to go to a broker like yourself, or can I go directly to the FCB, the government bank? In all cases, you will have to go. To a broker. Uh, in the case that you have asked, um, the, the, the lead broker is an FCB subsidiary, and they, they would have appointed some of the FCB branches as shall we say agents. And therefore, for you, you should be able to go to those branches. Well, I think our time is now fully run out. And what I will say, if there are questions that we have not answered, we will respond to those unanswered questions on our website to which you can go and get the, the, the answers for those questions. So I want to take the opportunity to thank you, uh, participants, um, for joining with us in this our july series of the board webinar if you need to address any matters feel free to call us at two the number two board or go to our um, website at bossinvestment.com have yourself a wonderful investment week and we look forward to the next in our series of board webinars to address questions of investors on matters related to your investment portfolio or what you may want to invest. Have yourself a wonderful investment month until we see you again.